humanities faculty, as well as our faculty of um, science and health as well. So lots and lots of different uh, subject areas across the different faculties. And as I did mention, it is possible to be studying a subject within social sciences, um, politics and international relations, for example, but have the option to take classes uh, within humanity. So that might be across global studies or history or human rights. Um, so there is that interdisciplinarity. Um, but yeah, this isn't exhaustive. This is just to give you an idea of some of the different subject areas that we offer across all our levels of study. Um, so Essex, as I mentioned, um, generally speaking in the UK, you know, we have a reputation for teaching, teaching and excellence. At Essex, we place as much importance on our teaching as well as our research. So our academics, lots of our academics will um, be researchers within their uh, academic department and they will also be uh, professors and teaching that research and teaching their information to students as well. So we place as much importance um, on both of these both of these areas. Um, and then just I've just created a little snapshot to give you an idea of sort of some of our world rankings for some of the subject areas that I've mentioned. So law, sociology, linguistics, business, economics and philosophy tend to be subjects that we are, um, you know, very well ranked for sort of on the world stage. But I would really encourage you to take a look at um, look at our subjects. Uh, as you can see, there's a link at the, at the on the slide there to explore the different subject areas um, and research that we're known for in those different subject areas as well. So moving on to the Essex experience, um, as I mentioned, we place a huge amount of importance on employability. Um, and especially if you're career orientated, like if you're wanting to come to study at university, but you want to make sure that you graduate with industry work experience or uh, you want to have completed an internship whilst you're studying or you want to work part time. There are so many opportunities for you to network, start building your global networks um, and learning new skills in different areas whilst you're studying at Essex. What I would say is um, the university will tell you about all these opportunities whilst you're a student and then it's up to you to take advantage of them. Um, and, you know, my advice is always just to say yes. That example that I gave of the student who was from Brazil that went to that went to um, Vienna, she was offered that opportunity because she got really involved in uh, in activities that were happening sort of outside the classroom as part of her um, with with the academic department that she was studying in. So it really pays to get to know your academics and just say yes to these opportunities. If things don't work out or it, it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go, you can always uh, retreat or say no and try something different. Um, but you never know what doors may open through trying different um, different opportunities. So as an international student, uh, your visa will allow you to work part time whilst you study. And this is a really good way to earn money whilst you're studying, um, but also sort of building building upon your networks. Um, you have opportunities to volunteer as well. So um, uh, if you were studying law, for example, we have a law clinic um, and that is an opportunity for students to be supporting the law clinic um, with real clients, so real legal cases. Um, and, you know, this is an extracurricular activity that's that's really great for law clinics. Equally, if you were studying or wanted to get involved with human rights, we have a human rights clinic. And very similarly, there are those opportunities to be dealing with, you know, real cases, real clients. Um, which is just a great uh, foot in the door um, and yeah, great skills to be getting whilst you're studying at university. We have careers fairs, so they happen on campus. Sometimes they might be related or specific to your department. Um, sometimes they might be more general, but again, that's a really great way for you to be able to network, to meet employers. Very often they have links with the university. Um, so it's a really great way to start, you know, learning how to network but also um yeah taking advantage of the fact that they are there on campus and and available for you to speak to so yeah just a few examples there um 
And I think I've mentioned a, a, a few of these already. Um, there are lots of um, extracurricular initiatives. For example, if you wanted to learn a language whilst you're studying, or you wanted to get, you wanted to learn skills in data science, we have short courses. Um, both of these are designed for students who aren't studying languages or data science, but you want to get skills outside of your subject area. Um, there are international volunteering opportunities. So I just mentioned the volunteering opportunity that's on camp on campus supporting our law clinic or human rights clinic, which is very convenient. But there are uh, international opportunities too. So I think Pacific is an organization that um, offers volunteering opportunities to students in amazing countries and destinations. So I think for this summer, students will have the opportunity opportunity to go to Fiji um, to do like an environmental and sustain, sustainable volunteering opportunity. Um, so yeah, there's lots and lots of different um, opportunities, both on campus in the UK, but internationally as well. And then the only other thing that I'll mention on this slide um, quickly is the opportunity for, that students have to start your own business. So the support um, to, to come up with your, well, the support um, that Essex startups offer for students who have a business idea and want support with developing that and basically starting it. So Essex startups is an initiative um, where our students who can be studying any subject, so you don't have to be studying anything related to business, you could be studying um, biological sciences, or you could be studying uh, history, but you've got an idea uh, of a, a business idea that you want to that you want to start start, uh, you can bid for funding through Essex startups, and they will award funding to students who they think have uh, a great uh, concept or idea. So there was a student actually from Mexico who I spoke to not that long ago. She's also just recently graduated. Um, she was studying financial technology at Essex, a master's, and um, she had managed to get funding twice for two different um, ideas that she had as for, for a new business through Essex um, startups. And there are some really successful um, businesses that have that have grown as a result of the support that they've received from Essex startups. So again, there are uh, these opportunities on campus as well. So this is just to give you an idea. I'm sure some of these um, big brands or names will be familiar to you. This is just uh, really just a snapshot of where some of our graduates have gone on to work once they've uh, completed their studies with us. And it's a wide range of different sectors and industries, um, but we're really proud to have such a global uh, network of, um, of alumni across different sectors and industries. So in terms of student life, um, you know, it's really easy for me to talk to you about what it's like as a as a student at Essex, but I think what's really important um, and speaks volumes is what our students are saying about their experience studying at Essex. So recently we were ranked first in the east of England for overall student pos positivity, and that's what students have um, have told have told us. So in the National Student Survey. Uh, we came out on top in our area in the UK. Um, and like I say, I think that's that really speaks volumes about uh, the experience that, that students are that are having. We place a huge amount um, of importance on this as well. You know, we really want our students to get involved um, in everything that's going on outside of the classroom as well. There are lots of different sports clubs and, so and societies. We have a Latin American society. I'll show you that in a bit more detail in just a second. Um, but there's lots and lots and lots of different ways for students to meet um, meet other students or, or join societies depending on what your interests are. Again, I always recommend if you're studying at Essex or any university, to be honest, join as many societies as you think you might be interested in. It's such a great way to meet people, expand your networks, um, get to try different things and, and yeah, meet people that you might not otherwise have met. Um, and of course, you're not committed. So if things don't work out or you decide it's not for you, then you can always drop the society, those societies and focus on the ones that you are really enjoying. Um, the campus itself, 
it as i mentioned it feels like a mini city it has everything that you could need all in one space we have theaters there's cinemas we have a sports arena with amazing sports facilities um there's over 20 different hospitality so restaurants bars nightclubs on thursdays my favorite day of the week we have a farmer's market on campus so we have different vendors and retailers from across uh from 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 the city that come onto campus and uh, sell their produce so we have amazing pastries and different cakes and cheeses and um yeah all sorts of different uh food and produce that's on campus so it's a really great day um, but yeah, the campus itself is very difficult for me to describe. I don't feel like I do it justice. It just has a great energy and vibrancy. Um, and if you speak to students, you know, I spoke to a, I spoke to five or six different students yesterday because I was on an interview panel for a job role within our team. And one of our questions was, um, if you were speaking to prospective students, what would you tell them about your experience studying at Essex? And every single one of them said the campus and the community, which again, I think that speaks volumes about what, what it's like studying at, at the university. We guarantee accommodation. I'll talk about accommodation in a bit more detail. And we're constantly improving the campus and facilities and services so that students have the best possible experience that they can. Um, so this is just, again, a, a, just a snapshot of some of our societies that we offer. Um, we have some, some sort of more recent ones include um, the K-pop society. I think the Taylor Swift society is relatively new. Um, but yeah, a lot of these societies have, have been going strong for quite a few years, actually. Um, but yeah, there's a huge range depending on, on your interests and, and what you would want to be doing sort of in your in your free time. But I just wanted to show you the Latin American society and just uh, to showcase the fact that um, they are, you know, of, of course, I'm biased. Um, so of course, I would tell you that they are the best society. Um, but they've won awards year after year. Um, and last year, they won the gold for society of the year. And this is just yeah, an idea of some of the different students who are part of the uh, sort of select committee. So students from uh, Colombia, from Peru, from Venezuela, Costa Rica. So yeah, this is and they're across different levels. So some of these students are studying at an undergraduate level, some at a postgraduate research and some masters. But um, yeah, they're always so I follow them on Instagram, you could find them if you wanted to see what they were up to. Um, but they're always posting different events. They're very collaborative. And um, they're doing something with I think the Brazilian society next week. Uh, they often do things with like the model UN or the debating society. They're just incredibly inclusive fun. And they're always organizing lots of uh, great events. So I can promise you that if you were coming to study at Essex, you will meet people from your part of the world um, that will be very uh, happy for you to join this uh, community on campus. So uh, in terms of sport, um, one of the really nice things about sport at Essex is that if you play at a competitive level, um, a, a different a sport, then you can try out for one of the teams. We take it very seriously. Last year, Essex came the highest. So in the UK, UK uh, universities will compete against other universities. We have a university league. And last year, Essex came the highest place we've ever come, I think, in like the 30 year history. So we take it seriously. We do um, we do like competitive sports. So there is that side of sport. But also, if you just want to try something new or, or play a sport because um, you want to keep fit or keep active or you, you just enjoy it, then there is that side of it as well. So we have the competitive side, but we also have the really inclusive, fun, give it a go um attitude towards towards sports as well um, if you are a sport enthusiast if you do play at a competitive level or you want to be surrounded by other sports enthusiasts we actually have an athletes village on campus so it's a dedicated housing area within our accommodation on campus if you live on campus then you get a gym included within your accommodation contract as well um, and the facilities are amazing um, so yeah that's that just comes as part of your accommodation contract if you're wanting to keep fit and active um, then we don't charge you anything extra for you to have that um, gym uh, membership 
Um, so in terms of supporting our students, again, I, this was something I mentioned right at the beginning that, you know, universities really do place uh, lots of significance on making sure students, especially our international students, feel supported. And at Essex, we have so many different outlets, depending on who you feel comfortable speaking to. I think one of the first things to say is that, you know, I introduced myself as um, being the point of contact for students from across Latin America. Um, my job at Essex is to support you with your application and throughout that journey um, until you arrive on campus. And very often I stay in contact and remain, uh, remain a point of contact even whilst you're studying at Essex. But my job is to really support you from the very start and with your application um, journey. We have dedicated teams who can provide visa application and pre-departure sessions as well. So throughout the summer months whilst you're applying for your visa and it can be quite a stressful process, um, we're here to support you and, and guide you through that process. I do really recommend, because as I mentioned, it's really easy for me to talk about what it's like studying at Essex, but I do recommend, you know, if you want to hear from a current student, especially potentially from Mexico, hear what their experience is like studying at Essex, and I really encourage you to, to reach out to a current student, I can help facilitate some, some uh, conversations if that would be helpful, um, but that will really help you to have an understanding of what it's like studying at Essex from the perspective of someone who's who's from your part part of the world. Um, and then every single student when they're studying at Essex has a personal tutor, so that's someone that you can go to if ever you wanted any academic support. Um, we have a dedicated student wellbeing and inclusivity team um who have like an open door policy again if ever you were feeling homesick for example when you wanted to speak to our student well-being team they operate an open door policy they're always there to support students uh, within our accommodation we have an accommodation based support service so to help you move in but also if there was ever any issues with your accommodation you have a point of contact that that can support at any point we have our students union again they can provide completely independent support and guidance um, and we have a doctor surgery on campus. So I think the main thing that I would love for you to take away from this is that there's so many different support outlets depending on who you feel comfortable speaking to. Um, I've mentioned some of this already but just, just to explain our accommodation, we have different accommodation options depending on your personal preferences, depending on your budgets, how many people you want to be living with, how centrally located you want to be, there's different options um, for you. Um, we guarantee accommodation for international students. So if you're thinking about applying to start with us in um, next October 2025, the deadline for guaranteed accommodation is the 12th of September. So you have ages to get your accommodation application in. You know, I would always recommend get it in sooner rather than later so that you get the accommodation allocation that you prefer. Um, but the deadline for guaranteed accommodation is really quite late. So it's nothing that you need to stress or worry about um, once the application is in, if you apply. And then the last thing to say is that when you're looking at our different uh, accommodation options, the price is inclusive of everything. So there's no hidden charges or your bills, furniture, um uh, utility bills that's all it's all included within the accommodation uh, contract and so this is my favorite thing about essex so before i start talking about um sort of the application process uh if you were to ask me what is uh my favorite thing about studying at the university or st or about the university sort of more more broadly i would say it is how international and global this uh this university is. So at Essex, around 40% of our students are from outside of the UK. So it's very, very likely that if you were studying at Essex, you would be in a classroom with other students from different parts of the world who have different experiences and perspectives to you. And that really adds value to your learning experience. Um, it's also likely that you'll be living, if you're living in university accommodation, that you'll be living with people from, from all over the world as well. So you really have the opportunity 
to like build this global network. It's not just our students, our staff, our academic staff and professional services staff are from all over the world um, as well. So you really, really do feel like it is the world in one place. You can be on campus and hear different accents, different languages. Sometimes you don't even hear English when you're sort of walking around, which is just a, yeah, it's just a really nice feeling that uh, the campus is just full of people from different parts of, of the world. So on to fees and funding and a little bit about the application process. So this information about fees is true for 2025 entry. So um, assuming that you're thinking about applying to start in October uh, or September 2025, uh, these are the sorts of fees that you would be um, looking at. They do vary depending on the course depending on the program that you're looking at. Um, and we do have this information on all of our course web pages. So if there's a specific course you're interested in, you can go onto the course web page and it will say what the fees are for that course. Um, we have a really great resource and you can see that I've that it's linked on the on the screen here where you can find a breakdown um, of the an estimated breakdown of the cost of living. I'm always asked um, what is like what is an expected cost of living uh, at Essex or in you know in the southeast and it's a really difficult question to answer because of course it completely depends on your lifestyle preferences and two students might have a very different uh, sort of spending spending habits um, but the UK Home Office estimates that the average weekly cost including accommodation uh, for a university that's outside of London is just over 250 uh, pounds a week. So you're looking at sort of just over a thousand pounds a month for everything outside of your tuition. So housing and living, uh, living costs um, per month. So scholarships, we have lots and lots of scholarships. Um, as Sophia mentioned, we have an agreement with FUNED, which means that uh, we offer an automatic 20% tuition fee discount. This isn't a scholarship that you have to apply for. Um, it's automatically discounted off your fees. But there are some other scholarships that are worth um, mentioning. Um, in particular, the Global Talent Scholarship, which is worth a 50% tuition fee discount. So this is a separate scholarship application which you can apply to. Um, it is, uh, the deadline for this scholarship is the 15th of May, um, and that is a hard deadline. So if you're wanting to apply for this scholarship, then you do need to meet that May deadline. Um, you need to demonstrate your uh, academic achievements, your extracurricular engagement, what you intend to do with an Essex qualification once you've graduated um, from the university, how you intend to add value to our international student community. These are all things that we would want to see in the application. Um, and if you're successful, then you can get a 50% tuition fee discount, which as you can see, if you look at our fees for our masters, um, a 50% tu tuition fee discount would be in excess of £10,000. So really worth applying to if you um, if you have strong academic, uh, if you have a strong academic profile. The only other scholarship worth, uh, well, there's a few other scholarships worth mentioning, um, including the Academic Excellence Scholarship, which is, again, awarded automatically if you get 80% or higher in your undergraduate degree from Mexico. But what I would say is if you're going through, if you're applying to, uh, with FUNED, um, you can't stack these scholarships. So if you were eligible, let's say for the Academic Excellence Scholarship, which is worth £4,000 and the FUNED 20% discount, then you would get the 20% discount over the £4,000 because 20% would be worth more than the £4,000 set um, amount. Equally, if you were awarded the Global Talent Scholarship, you can't get this on top of FUNED, um, but we would give you the higher discount. So if there was a situation where you were eligible for more than one discount, then we'd just give you the one that's worth the most amount of money. Um, we do have a scholarship finder and you can search our Mexico country webpage, which details this in a lot more, uh, in, which has a lot more information about this. Um, but also I would say if you wanted to know more, you can reach out to me directly. 
Oh, here we go. So, uh, yeah, on this page, you can search our fees and funding and um, we have a Mexico country specific page, which um, uh, yeah has more details about the scholarships that I've just mentioned. So in terms of the application process, it's a direct process to the university. Applications are open, so you can submit as soon as you like. Um, it's a fairly easy process to submit the application. Um, it's an online form, so you need to provide us with uh, various bits of information. You can choose up to three courses. So if there were if there was more than one masters that you were interested in applying to study, then you can apply to up to three. Just make sure that your personal statement, which you have to write, is relevant to the th to the courses that you're applying to study. Um, there's, it doesn't cost you anything to apply, so it, there's no fee attached to submitting an application. Um, and once you've submitted your application, you can then um, you can then um, track your responses on your on your portal, um, which you will be provided information with once the once the application has been submitted. So academic entry requirements. Uh, most will consider seven or 75% from your undergraduate degree in Mexico. If you're applying to study a, a research, postgraduate research course, then a good master's degree in a relevant field is usually what we would be asking for. Um, if you're thinking about applying to study the Essex Masters in Business Administration, uh, there is uh, slightly more involved with that application uh, you need to have a minimum three years relevant work experience within a management position and there's also an interview process. Um, but what I would say is we're super transparent in terms of what we need to admit students for uh, for our courses, so you will find what our entry requirements are. Uh, as well as if, if there are any specific module or requirements on the course web pages, so please check the um, country web page for grade equivalents equivalencies um, and the course pages for any prerequisites. But if you've got any questions about a specific course and you want to know exactly what the academic requirements are, then you can speak to me directly. If something's unclear, we can always have a conversation with my colleagues in admissions as well. And then just to say on English language requirements, so um, it's very likely you would need, need to take an English language test. We accept a wide range of English language tests, including IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge Advanced, Cambridge Proficiency, Pearson, um, there's a few more as well. They do range depending on the course that you're applying to study at. But what I would say is you don't need to have taken an English language test at the point of application. So when you submit an application, uh, what we will need from you are your most recent academic transcripts um, in English. Uh, you need to have you need to complete the application form and you need to provide us with a personal statement which tells us why you want to apply to study the course, why you want to study at Essex, uh, your passions and motivations, um, uh, your motivation and reasons for, for wanting to to study your chosen subject or subject area um, and why you want to study in the UK. We have a really great resource. I'll put a link in the chat in just a moment um, which explains what we need or what we would want to see from a personal statement for applying to a postgraduate course at Essex. Um, but really, that's all that we need. There's some, um, if you're wanting to study law, for example, then we generally need a copy of your CV as well or resume. Um, but the English language test, we don't need at the point of application. So uh, you can always submit the application without the English language test and then we can ask for that retrospectively so we can ask, we can make that a condition of your offer and I would also say if there's anything missing from your application or if there's anything our admissions our admissions team needed to clarify we would just contact you and ask you to um, to provide us with that information so don't worry too much if, if something was missing from the application we can always ask that retrospectively. And then I've mentioned this right at the very beginning, if you want to stay in the UK, then there's a graduate route visa, which allows you to stay for two years um, and look for work at any skills level. What's really great about this visa is that you don't have to have a job lined up at the point of application. Um, there's not too many restrictions in terms of 
uh, what you do um, and yeah you don't have to find a job within a certain time frame so it's quite a flexible working visa and it allows you to stay for an additional two years. There are some criteria that you need to be aware of like passing your course which seems fairly obvious um, but we let you know what this information is as well before arriving. I've got a video but what I'll do instead because I'll prioritise answering questions is I'll get the link for this and then share it in the chat. Marlon uh, is from Mexico, she graduated not too long ago in advertising, marketing and the media. She was such a great example of an Essex student, she worked in my team uh, as part of an internship scheme so she helped me with things like social media um campaigns uh, market research speaking to prospective students she created lots of different uh yeah media campaigns for me outside of social media um but yeah she was just such a great example of a student that studied really hard but also uh was part of the dance club and society she was in like dance dance competition she had multiple part-time jobs working within my team as an intern um, but she was also a social media ambassador, working with the marketing teams. Um, so yeah, she was just a really great example of an Essex uh, of an Essex student. And she created a video um, about her experience studying at Essex. So that was a very quick run through. Hopefully it's given you sort of a good indication of what it's like studying at Essex. We have a cat on campus called Pebbles. That's why there's um, a picture of a cat on your screen. Um, but I'll just share my contact information as well. So if you wanted to reach out to me directly, I would be really happy to hear from you. That's what I'm here for. Um, and yeah, would be very happy to put you in contact with current students if it would be helpful to hear their experience of studying at Essex as well. Wow, thank you so much, Emma, uh, for that presentation. Uh, so now, if anyone has any questions, you can pop them in the chat or you can open your microphones and ask. I also shared a discount code. We have a 20% discount on the PTE test. So um, it's, I mean, if anyone hasn't done their English test and you might want to try that one just because you'll get more value for your money. Questions, alguna pregunta? Let me get, whilst I'm waiting, let me get the link for the, um, the video of Marlon and I can share that in the chat as well. Katia, you can ask your question. La puedes en español o en inglés, como quieras. Hi. Uh, I'm interested in studying a uh, science uh, mastership. So I don't know if this uh, university has something special like to offer. For example, me that I'm going to study something more like you know, it's renewable energy. I know you can relate that maybe with social, but I don't know if there's something like that in that university. Hi, Katia. Nice to hear from you. Sorry, did you say something related to energy? I heard you say masters. And was it something related to energy? Yes, renewable energy. That's something I'm interested in. And I listened that it has a lot of social things that exist in the city. But I don't know if that it has something related with renewable energy and maybe society that I can relate or it, it is not like that. I don't think so. We have a school of um, life sciences and they are probably the closest thing I would say. So we have courses or well, we have masters in it's more I mean, it's more related to like life sciences and marine biology and marine sustainability rather than renewable energy or like renewable engineering. It's not. It, yeah, it's not. I don't think we have anything like that. We have a really interesting course on um, it's called environmental futures with climate change. And it actually sits within our Department of Government. And it's a crossover between 
um, yeah, government and and life sciences, I guess, but it's more to do with um, policies and influencing strategy related to climate change. So it's not, I don't think it's quite what you're after. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm going to put a link because someone else has just asked because um, this might be helpful just in case I've misunderstood or if you wanted to take a look for yourself. Um, there's a link in the chat there where you can search all our subjects. Um, so yeah, that might be helpful to take a look at that in a bit more detail, just in case um, something has escaped me. Perfect, thank you. And that answers also Alondra's question. Um, anyone else? Alguien más? Tiene alguna pregunta? Okay, bueno, pues, uh, if that's it, thank you so much, Emma, for your time. I hope you have a nice evening, and I hope we see a lot of applicants for Essex for next year. Uh, we're always happy to see people going to great universities that we know it's going to be a good investment for uh, their, of their time and resources. So thank you so much, again, for your support, for your time, and yeah, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. And I should just say that we have an amazing student uh, from Mexico who came through FUNED this year. He's called Eduardo and I bumped into him on campus uh, just the other week because we had like a scholarship evening because he was actually he was awarded uh, our global talent scholarship. So he was successful in his application to get a 50 percent discount. Um, and he's having a really positive experience. And I am confident that if he, if anyone wanted to speak to him about his experience, he would be very, very happy. So please just let me know and I would, I can reach out to him. Thank you so much. That is very kind. No problem. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope it was helpful. I did pop my email address uh, just a few, uh, like in the chat as well. So please reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Bye. Take care, bye.